There are a bunch of properties that come with Flexbox that I'm sure most of beginners don't know about them or at least they don't know how to use them correctly. So therefore today we want to dive deep into each of them by detail and one by one. If you're eager to master web development and programming, this channel is made for you. If you enjoy what you see, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Before we kick off though, I want to tell you that if you're completely unfamiliar with CSS Flexbox and haven't used it before, then you better first know the Flexbox and overall the concept of Flexbox. And don't worry, I have another video that will teach you that right here. So go ahead and watch that first and then come back here. I'll be waiting for you. So now assuming that you hopefully know some of the basics, Let's talk about the first property that comes with CSS Flexbox, and that's the gap property. As you can see here, I have a flex container, and inside this flex container, I have three flex items. The first one, second, and third. And I have applied some basic styles for this, and these are the styles that you should be familiar with by now. And now let's talk about the gap property. You can see that by default, our flex items they are sticking to each other. There is no space between these flex items. So if you want to manually add some spaces between our flex items without using the justify content or align items properties. So we can uh, use the gap property here. For example, I can write gap and give it a 10 pixels. So you can see that now our flex items are separated by 10 pixels. So this is the gap property. The next property that I want to talk about is flex grow property. So as you can see here, uh, there is an amount of space which is left over uh, in this container because my browser's width is larger than the flex items width. So therefore, if I expand my browser, you can see that it just adds um, an extra space in the right side of my container. So if we want to fill out this amount of space by any of our flex items, we can use the flex grow property and then we can use the flex grow property to any of other flex items too. So let's make our second flex item to take all of this leftover uh, amount of space. So therefore we can just select our flex item specifically. So you can see here that my individual flex items, they have their own uh, classes specifically. So for selecting the second, we should write the second flex item. So this is the class name and we can use the flex grow property. And if I give it a number uh, larger than zero, because the default is zero, you can see that nothing changes. But if I give it one, for instance, you can see that it took all of the leftover space in this container and we can give this flex grow or use this flex grow to any of other flex items too for instance let's select our first and then uh, for example let's give it a flex grow of two now you can see that this first flex item because it has a larger flex grow number so it took an amount of space from the leftover space which was twice the size of the leftover amount of space which this second one took so it just if i increase this number it will get for example more space so now it took an amount of space which was three times bigger um, than the amount of space which this one took. So this is the flex grow property. So the next property that I want to talk about is flex shrink property and that's the opposite of the flex grow which means that let me first clear this flex grow things. You probably know that the default behavior of flex items when the browser's width is getting thinner or smaller is to shrink all together to fit in that browser size or that window size. So you can see that our flex items, they shrink, they narrow down themselves all together to fit in this container and they have an even amount of space. So they are equal, equal in the size. But what if we don't want this behavior for any of our flex items? For instance, say that we have a very important content inside this third flex item and, did, and we don't want it to be shrinked when the browser's width is 
shrinked or when it's displayed in a smaller device. So here is when the flex shrink property comes in. We can apply uh, just like uh, flex grow. We can apply this for any of our flex items. So let's select our third flex item. So I can just write third and I can give it a flex shrink. Of course, we can apply this flex shrink property to any of other flex items too. But for instance, let's um, use this for our third flex item first. So I can give it a zero. It means that if the browser's getting thinner, so you shouldn't shrink yourself. So, so this is the flex shrink of zero, which means it doesn't let the uh, flex item to shrink. You can see that now uh, when I uh, decrease the size of my browser, these two flex items, they shrink, but this one, it doesn't because we have said that uh, you should have the flex shrink of zero, which means you're not allowed to shrink or narrow down you yourself. And for example, let's use this flex shrink to our second flex item and see what happens. You can see that now this first and third flex items, they shrink, but the middle one, it doesn't because the flex shrink property is set to zero. So uh, what if we use this flex shrink to our other flex items too? For example, let's use this flex shrink to this first item and let's give it a value of like two. And now let's give this third flex item a number of, for example, one. You can see that the bigger value the thinner size which means that if we say the flex shrink of this flex item is two it means that it can shrink itself two times more than this uh, flex shrink of zero and one time more than this flex shrink of one so now this first flex item is very small because it has uh, a bigger sh uh, flex shrink value this third one is a little small because it has uh, a flex shrink of one and this one it doesn't change at all because it has uh, a flex shrink of zero set on that and if we change this it will shrink too for example if we give it four you can see that now this is the smallest uh, flex item and if we expand our browser whenever they reach uh, to their initial width then they ignore the flex shrink because now there is enough space for them to fit in their uh, container and to keep their initial size. So this is the flex shrink property. And by the way, another way when we, uh, if we don't want our flex items to shrink like this, to lose their width, another way is to use the flex wrap property. So uh, let's remove these flex shrink things. So in the flex container, we can use the flex wrap property. Right now, you can see that our flex items are all the same size because we have removed the flex shrink. So if we expand our browser, you can see that uh, they leave uh, space in the right side of the container. And if we shrink it, they shrink all together. So the first way was to use the flex shrink property if we don't want our flex item to be shrinked. And another way, which is uh, more, uh, you know, more common ways to use the flex wrap property and we can use flex wrap by default. It is no wrap, which means that uh, it just doesn't let the flex items to wrap to the new line with when there is no enough space for them to fit in. So, but if we, for example, give it a flex wrap of wrap, you can see that it keeps the initial size of our uh, flex items and when the uh, container does not have enough space to contain all of the flex items in the same row then it breaks the row to the new lines and it just wraps the flex items to the new rows and if we expand it you can see that whenever there is an amount of space that it can fit uh, another flex item it just brings it back and if we keep expanding you can see that now they're all in the same row and if we shrink our browser you can see that it just goes to the new line so this is um, the best way to make your pages responsive too and in the same time you can keep your uh, flux items exactly with the same heights or widths that you want so this was the flex wrap property so next property that i want to talk about is flex basis 
and let's uh, remove this flex wrap and let's bring our browser like in this size so next property that I want to talk about is the flex abyss property and that's used along with the flex grow property I just forgot to use this flex basis on the flex grow but I had no problem let's uh, give some flex grows for our content so actually let's give this flex grow to our second and third flex items so I want to give it a flex grow of one and in the third flex item I want to give it a flex grow of two and if we expand our browser so you can see that the leftover space, the amount of the extra and leftover space, it is divided into two parts. And the third flex item just takes twice the size of that uh, leftover space than this second one does. So this is the flex gross default behavior. It just keeps the initial width of our flex items and then it adds the uh, amount of extra space based on the flex grow number but if we don't want this behavior we want for example that our flex our third flex item to be three times bigger than the uh, second flex item or the first flex item so we can do that by flex basis and actually what the flex basis property does is it just ignores the initial width of our flex items it just assumes that the flex items are set to zero in the terms of their width so if we set the flex basis of this second and third uh, flex items to zero for instance then it just sets their width to zero initially which means that there will be nothing in the place of these two flex items and it will be an empty and blank space and then the flex grow property comes and now it says that hey uh, look at the leftover space and extra space and all of these two places will be extra spaces and then it uh, divides this space this leftover space to two, two parts and the third flex item will get twice bigger the size than this second flex item gets so uh, therefore they will be always measured and they will not be changeable and it will be very accurate so let me show you for example let's use the flex basis flex basis and let's give it zero because we want to start counting from zero it just ignores the initial width of our flex items so let's use the flex basis to this third one too and set it to zero so now you can see that this third flex item is exactly two times bigger than this second one because we say that you should get an amount of space which is two times bigger than the uh, second flex item so now it is exactly two times bigger there is no other leftover space because it just assumes that these flex items they had a zero width so now they are exactly measured correctly and this is two times bigger than this and if we expand our browser you can see that better so this is the initial width of our flex item this second flex item is exactly half of the size of this third one if we just assume that this is the middle of the third flex item you can see that it is exactly the same size as the second flex item and it's two times bigger than this so this is the flex basis property so it will be very useful property if we want to have a measured amount of space based on the browser's window size so regardless of the initial width of our flex items so if we shrink it you can see that it will be always two times bigger than this second one and it will be always half of this so this is a kind of useful this is very useful when we want to have responsive websites and if we want to lay out our content and to be very measured and very accurate so this is very perfect properties i think so the last property that i want to talk about is order property and that's used for changing the flex items order without changing their html code for instance you can see here that this first flex item comes first after that there is a second flex item and third flex item so they've got their numbers so we know that they have an order and if you want to change this order without changing this html for instance i can move this third one to the top and it will be displayed first and we don't want to do that instead we can use the 
order property in the Flexbox to change the order of the Flex items visually without touching the HTML code. So for example, we can switch this first Flex item with this third Flex item and move this second Flex item to somewhere else. So let me show you. I can use the order to the first. Uh, we will use this order to all of the Flex items. So I want this first to be last and I want the second to be order two for example I want to completely uh, reverse it and then I want to use the order for this one to one so you can see that we easily change the order of uh, our flex items the way that they are displayed without changing the HTML code so this is sometimes useful especially when you want to uh, switch these flex items somewhere based on the screen size for example in a smaller screen you, you, you might want to move any of your flex items somewhere else and all right this also can be useful sometimes but I personally don't use this order property if, in, if I need to change the order of something I would probably change it right here in the HTML but anyways all right, we covered some of the flex box properties in the CSS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos in this channel, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice time.